YouTube family in the house. What's up? I love you guys so very much. So, the Lord, the Lord's arriving is soon. That's, I'm going to start it off this way. I have literally been getting dream after dream after dream after dream after dream. It has been a collage uh, of dreams. And um, I'm going to share it. I guess I might as well just run through them. Um, and the interpretation of each. Hopefully this won't be too, uh, too lengthy. But every single one of the dreams has to do something around uh, his coming or his power. So let's get right into it. Dream number one. I'm going to tell you the dream first, and then I'm going to tell you the interpretation after. So, dream number one, uh, I used to play basketball, and um, I used to be like, uh, like I started in varsity, like all, the, all that type of stuff. So, I, I, I played, I loved it. So, dream number one, I'm watching a basketball game, and I realized, wait, I'm supposed to be playing, but the reason I can't play is because I don't have my jersey. So I spent the whole game looking for my jersey, but I couldn't find it. So then I was asking people on my team, I was like, yo, let me borrow your jersey so I can go play. And they were like, no. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So then I kept looking for jerseys. I'm like, I, 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 can't, I can't find any jerseys. Um, I went to locker rooms. Um, I went in the hallways because usually basketball games are at schools, at least at the high school level, you know, not at a stadium. So um, I'm looking in the hallways. I'm looking in lockers. I'm looking in the locker room. I'm looking in the bathroom. Just any, honestly, any place where I might have left it or um, an extra one could have been. And I only found cheap versions of it. So I only found like the practice jersey. Anybody know if you played um, any sports? After a certain level, you get practice jersey and then you get a game jersey. So you practice all week um, in a jersey and then when it's game time, you put your uniform on. So I only found practice jerseys. They had holes in it, all that stuff. I was like, man, I can't get by with these. So I was like, I, this is awful. So then the game ends and everybody was looking disappointed at me and I'm like guys I'm, I, I didn't have a jersey I'm so sorry I couldn't I can't just come in and play without a jersey and I understood it was my fault that I lost my jersey so uh, my dad was the coach not of my high school team but he was always my coach like when I was a kid he coached me up so he was coaching me during this this dream he was coaching me, and then we were home. It kind of skipped. Um, and it was still the same day. But when he sat on the couch and I sat next to him, I was literally so sorrowful and so distraught that I couldn't even open my mouth to speak. I was like, you know, I was trying to say, like, Daddy, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I really wanted to play. I really wanted to be there. But I just I couldn't find my jersey. But I I was I was a, a puddle of tears. I couldn't even open my mouth. It was just frozen, just like just frozen. Um and then that was it. So then the interpretation of this dream is this. When we attend the wedding feast, that represented the game. The jersey represented the Holy Spirit. Now Remember the five foolish versions and the five wise versions. What happened? The five wise got to go into the wedding feast and the five foolish went to go try to buy oil after the bridegroom already came. So the bridegroom came, the wise went in, they were able to play the game, right? They were able to play, be in the game. But then the foolish, which was myself in the scenario, um, the foolish... I couldn't, I couldn't play because I didn't have a jersey. So I tried to substitute it 
for a cheap version of what the Holy Spirit is. And the scripture that came to mind, thank you now, like right just now is, um, having a form of godliness, but denying the power, right? Um, so many people substitute a relationship with Jesus with the religion, with the religion of Jesus, which is two totally different things. So you can't substitute a relationship with religion and then expect the same results. Otherwise, you will be cast out. The wedding feast, you won't be able to play in the game. I hope you see where this is going. Um, and after the rapture is... Uh, during and after the rapture is the game period. So, um, the whole time I'm looking for my jersey, the rapture is happening, right? So I'm looking for this jersey, can't find cheap uh, substitutes. I understand it's happening. I'm Each second gone by, is, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. And uh, again, I'm going to say the Holy Spirit was representation of the jersey. And the Holy Spirit isn't something you take on and put off one day and whatever you're either all in or you're all out and what happens is if you start in it right but then you slowly start to reject it the holy spirit won't leave but you can come out of agreement with it so so much so to the point to where it becomes a cheap substitute because you have a reprobate mind now so what i mean by this is once you accept jesus you get the holy spirit right on the spot but if you spend your whole new Christian life ignoring the Holy Spirit and grieving the Holy Spirit, you are now a foolish virgin. You are no longer wise. The jersey is no longer with you because you came out of agreement with it because you're now agreeing with sin. And two people can't occupy, two people with the different wills can't occupy. That's why uh, the Bible says you will either serve God or you serve Satan. There's no in between. So you can't serve two masters. So you either got the real jersey you either got the real Holy Spirit or you ain't got it at all. And no cheap substitutes can do it. So, last part of the dream. I get home and I'm looking at daddy. I'm like, dad, I'm, I can't talk. I'm so sorrowful. I'm literally puddles of just regret, um, fear. All the above, just all the above. Not not trying to deal with that. And obviously, this is me. Uh, my dad was representing Jesus at this point. And I looked up to dad, and I couldn't even speak. And that's how uh, the people will be when they get in the presence of God, either during judgment or, you know, for whatever reason, when they meet God, when they die or whatever. They're going to be in the presence of God. And they're not going to be able to speak because they're going to understand that their deeds were evil. They're going to understand they could have did so much to prevent them losing their jersey. They will understand it's totally their fault for not caring about the jersey, for not caring about game time. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's that interpretation. So right now it's game time. It's soon to be game time. We warm it up. Don't just carelessly throw away the Holy Spirit. Don't carelessly place it in the locker. Don't put it on one day and then ignore it for two months. Because if that happens, you're no longer in agreement. It has to be all day, every day. And yes, we're not perfect. Ne I'm never telling you you're going to be perfect. I would be lying if I told you I was perfect. But the difference is recognizing where we go wrong and repenting. So if you walk around and you ignore God and you don't say, Lord, I'm sorry for the things that I transgressed you for you have to start questioning what is your relationship with like with God because we have to be talking to God all the time not always in consistent sorrowful forgiveness mode but that is necessary a lot of the time because of uh, our fallen nature so that's dream number one dream number two um, is this I started off having a good old time in uh like an ocean i guess you would say and me and some people around are swimming and all of a sudden this uh voice starts playing in my head it's it's the voice of the lord no doubt about it he was saying just bi just biblical terms he said it enough because god knows how i 
he knows how to talk to me. So he was saying words like, this is like the beast of this, and then like the beast of Revelation, and then he was like, I'm gonna do like this, like I did to the Canaanites, like just a whole bunch of biblical stuff was in my ear, and I understood it as, you know, as biblical nature. So I knew whatever was about to happen is about to be biblical. Um, so then all of a sudden, uh, this beast, um, you know, a Venus flytrap, what's going on? My hood is not open. Thank you. Four years of ministry. Sorry. <laughs> issues happening. Um, yeah. So, you know, a Venus flytrap, imagine that on a tail, imagine, um, a dragon, but like mixed with a lizard. So a mini dragon with a tail, like a long tail at the end of it, like a Venus flytrap type thing that's spread and it's got like all the spikes on it. And then imagine like a lizard dragon face and then um, I guess it's like a dinosaur body. So we're all in the water. I'm hearing all these biblical languages. Like, you know, the Canaanites, da 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 da. Couldn't make much sense of actual what the biblical words were saying, but I understood that, yo, this is, this is, Biblicalness about to happen. So, as soon as this beast, after the after God was speaking in my ear, the beast came up out of the ocean, and all of a sudden it was panic, right? And this thing moved so fast in the water and on land that we were in slow motion compared to it. So. If I was in the water and I was trying to swim, it would literally be like I'm moving an inch at a time. And then this thing just had free reign on who to kill. So this thing, once it got a scent of who you were, once it got a scent of sin of who you were, it, you already were pronounced dead. Like that's how accurate this thing was at killing. So I'm in the water, I'm watching it kill everything around me. And I was just praying. I was like, Lord, don't let this thing kill. I was, I was just seeing it just, boom, it was a multi, not a multitude, it was about 50 people uh, in the in this ocean, and I watched it just go after each and every one of them, and all of a sudden, I hear a sniff above my head, and I had an understanding, it's got me in, in its sight, so I just started praying, Lord, don't let this thing get me, um, so I, I escape out the water, and I'm on dry land. And then it was going around just kind of, it was almost like it was showing off how easy it could kill humans. It was just going around the land, just like boop, boop, real quick. Just almost teleporting, but just running really, 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 really fast. And it was just knocking humans down without even trying. So I get to a tree in the, and the spirit of the Lord said, climb up the tree. So I go climb up the tree. Um, and sure enough, the beast couldn't, uh, couldn't get me. He tried to climb up the tree. But then I was so high, uh, the tree ended up crumbling uh, just below me. And I was kind of like left in the tree up top. And then the beast fell down. But the interpretation, obviously, is this is going to be the things that are going to be coming up, up out of the earth, out of that abyss. Um, where like demons and creatures and all those things are going to be roaming the earth freely. Um, this is the part where it talks about men's hearts will faint from fear for the things to come upon the earth. I was literally so scared, I thought I was gonna die. So, just another dream saying, you don't wanna be left behind here. Dream number three, this one's pretty cool. Uh, I, it started off, this one I'm kinda gonna interpret as I go. This one started off, I was, in uh, like a grassy, deserty kind of place, um, and I was just kind of like looking at the uh, terrain and whatever. But then all of a sudden, I lay eyes on a tomb, and my spirit knew what it was looking at before the dream did. So my spirit was telling me what was happening. The Lord was telling me what was happening before my dream um, produced it. So I had an understanding clearly of what was going on. So, I'm in this grassy, deserty place, and all of a sudden, a tomb appears. And then my spirit goes, oh, that's the tomb that Jesus rises out of. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. 
And I was like, wait, but where are the two Roman guards? And sure enough, my vision kind of goes from on top of the tomb to down and the two Roman guards are there. Or, the, you know, the, the two guards who guard the tomb. So, uh, my, the spirit speaks to me again and says, ooh, watch this, Jesus is about to come out the tomb. And sure enough, Jesus, you know, he walks out the tomb. And he does not like a, uh, I don't want to say like a drunken walk, but kind of like his bones, chest came back to life and the tomb busts wide open. And then he like stood up out of the tomb. And uh, when I say that stone flew a hundred yards away, that, that stone flew, that stone bust wide open. Um, so that was cool. And then my spirit told me, oh, watch this. This is when Jesus like uh, transforms like uh, into his glorified body. And I was like, okay, I'm watching. So all of a sudden I'm looking and then my head naturally turns away because I couldn't handle the glory of it. But then when I'm turned the complete opposite way, I see his glory shining all throughout everything. And um, if you've ever seen, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. Imagine, I'm trying to see what everybody would know. Oh, so imagine like, a hula hoop but it's like uh energy right or like uh if you ever seen like a smoke ring i guess um imagine a really big smoke rings and like when a helicopter descends you can kind of see the wind's effect on everything so mix like a, a hundred big hula hoops or like smoke rings with like clear energy and it's coming everywhere circular around the entire uh, landscape. So that's how much power was coming off of Jesus. So he rose and I understood he was all white, um, like shining with glory. Everything was just uh, affected by his presence. And I was like, dang, Jesus in the house. He about to mess him up. Um, I, was just, I was just excited to be, be seeing this. And my dream skipped to a modern day scene but it was still the tomb right and I saw all these missiles trying to be pointed at Jesus and like yo they trying to they trying to wipe my man's out and it was my understanding this was just um uh letting me know the power of Jesus so I'm like okay what, what's going down so as soon as everybody launched I'm talking about like 50 missiles came out the air they all going at Jesus he says, he starts to do this. He takes each missile that was launched, turns it around in the air, and throws it at the people who uh, threw it at him. And then you can see these missiles chasing these people running helplessly. They were helpless. And then this, uh, the missile would land on the people, they would, you know, explode. And I just watched this missile after missile, and his voice echoed throughout the entire planet. And it was just like, you think you can destroy me? And it was like, missile, bow. He was like, I am that I am. Missile, bow. I was like, hoo, hoo, hoo. It was pretty sweet. So I'm looking at all this. I'm like, wow, king of kings. This is who I serve. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and lastly, again, this was just giving me an understanding of how unfair of a fight it is when Jesus shows up on our team. So Jesus... I, okay, this is going to sound uh, strange, but, but bear with me for a second. Jesus allowed me to feel his power for a bit of time. Not in the sense of, I'm a God. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying Jesus, in the perspective of the dream, gave me an understanding clearly of what it's like to have his power and how unfair it is. So this will happen. I'm representing of Jesus in this next portion. So, I'm in a house, and people... I walk in, in the house after the dream, after the missiles come down. I walk in this house. And there's a group of people trying to kill me. And I don't panic. I'm just like, time freeze. And literally, time stops. And I'm like, this is really... They don't understand that they're frozen. But I, I being Jesus, can operate outside of time. So they have no chance of anything ever even touching me if they even if they wanted to. So I said, time freeze. And I said, you, you and you, I spoke to them. I said, you turn the stone and perish. 
And sure enough, they just withered away, stone, turned to stone and perish. And I was like, all right, time, go. So time came back and they were like, you know, they kind of looked around. I was like, where is so-and-so? Where is so-and-so? And then they made eye contact with me. And then it was like, oh, let's get them. Sure enough, they started running after me. I just kind of laugh. I say, time, freeze. Sure enough, they're in like, you know, mid-run and they're frozen. And I said, the rest of you, turn to stone and perish. And sure enough, they turn to stone and perish. Um, but what I was um, told about that portion is just like, when you have Jesus on your side, there is no way you can lose because the people who are after you, the problems that you have are so earthly and so carnal and they're so minute in comparison to the power that Jesus has. And that was just the smallest glimpse of the things that he can do. Um, excuse me, I got like the hiccups or something. So those are kind of my dreams. Um, if I get any more, I'll share them, but it was, it was just crazy. I do have one more. This one is unique. So, um, my last video, I said, maybe I'll explain this dream later on. Maybe I'm not, but this one's kind of weird. So I used to be uh, a metalhead, um, like, you know, rock and roll, screamo, all that type of stuff. I know shocking black guy with dreads. You wouldn't think that. But anyway, I used to be in that, uh, in that like lifestyle. Um, I never, you know, like wore the piercings and all that stuff, but I, I really enjoyed the music because I was a drummer and, uh, that style of music had really, really unique drumming. Um, so that's what kind of attracted me to it. But anyway, um, I used to listen to a band called Tool and the Perfect Circle. They're the same lead singer by the name of Maynard James Keenan. And dude used to like he used to always have uh my ear because his voice was so unique and i was like wow this this dude's awesome and i knew like all their songs you know how that goes when you're a fan and you idolize stuff like that i knew all their songs all that stuff and in this dream um i saw uh i was like <laughs> it's funny i was in another basketball game but it was full of celebrities so um it was like a bunch of famous people it was really weird um but i the only one that i noted was keenan and the first thing i noticed about him was he was cross-dressed he was dressed as a woman and i was like that's weird but i was like okay i mean that's weird but all right you're a woman okay got it so i thought i thought nothing of it um and this was during the time of like, you know, I was I was just having, you know, a lot of dreams at that point. But I was like, that's weird. Maynard showed up as a woman and uh, it just took me by surprise. And sure enough, I remember uh, during some of his concerts, he likes to dress up as a woman. And I was like, oh, I see what's happening. It's about to get tripped out real quick. Um, so then I woke up and a revelation came to me literally a day before I watched a video of somebody talking about Maynard. Um, and it was like, it was, uh, somebody else had a dream about him and, and his dream, the guy said, no, this is in real life. Sorry. In real life, he went to a concert and one of Maynard, Maynard's song is called the noose. And he sang, um, how do the lyrics go? Oh, not to bring, not to tip your halo down around your neck and choke you out. And at the time, you know, before I had Jesus, I thought nothing of that. I thought, oh, that's a cool line. Um, but then he was explaining, and he was at the end of the song, it says, uh, not to pull your halo down, not to pull your halo down, not to pull your halo down and choke you now. So at the end of the song, Maynard in real life is saying, the rapture is soon, the rapture is soon, the rapture is soon. He's not Christian at all. If anything, he's very anti-Christian. He's satanic. And um, I was just re uh, recently learning about Nephilim and how like they're still around. They were in the days of Noah. And also after that, look at Genesis 6 for that. So Nephilim are still around. Fallen angels are still around. Remember the Bible says, careful who you entertain because you might be entertaining angels unawares. So that goes for fallen angels too. We don't have to be careful about entertaining them. But 
uh, careful of, they may be in positions of power or whatever, so that's why we don't have idols. Um, so, it dawned on me, um, in one of Maynard's songs, he is called Three Libra, Three Libras or whatever, and the whole song is from the perspective of a fallen angel. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I woke up after the dream and all this is just coming at me at once. Like just super heavy duty revelation. And I'm like, Maynard is, has the potential to be a fallen angel. I'm like, how? Because no normal, no normal person who operates outside the will of God knows about the rapture. No way. Barely Christians know about the rapture. Let's just be real. So I'm like, this normal celebrity dude knows all about the rapture. Not not even about the rapture. He knows that it's soon. And he's telling all this, this crowd who's in love with him, unknowing they have no idea what he's talking about. He's just laughing in their face about it. And he's saying that the rapture is soon. So it just dawned on me all at once. You have no idea, first of all, how soon the coming of the Lord is, the plans they have of deception after this, who is who, and who to trust. So it just gave me a deeper understanding of why I should only be following Jesus um, rather than the rest of the world. Um, because first of all, do cross justice as a woman. That's a big no-no. We know not to wear anything that pertains to a woman. Um, women don't wear anything that pertains to a man. We know this. Um, and just the whole revelation of, dang, dude's a fallen angel. Um, either inhabited with the spirit of, because you know when, when you're famous and stuff, you, you have to do a lot of demonic activity to get and keep your stage of fame. So he could have been indwelt with the spirit of Nephilim or be incarnate himself. Um, either way, the spirit, the demonic spirit is there. And the Lord revealed that to me in that dream. Um, so th th those have been a good chunk of my dreams. This video is like 30 minutes long, but hopefully you uh, you get something from a family. As always, please give your life to the Lord. Like, don't delay. I'm telling you, the 120th year starts March 26th. Um, and remember, God gave Noah 120 years before the flood came he told them it's going to be 120 years and the book of psalms represents the 19th of, 19th book of the bible um 1900s um so 1901 all the way to 120 and 120 the very 120 psalm is a psalm of ascent means to going up um and god prophesied everything that would happen from the year 1901 and up including the rebirth rebirth of israel in 1948 including uh, the king's uh, meeting to give Israel the land, including the Six Day War in 1967. Um, I read a book on it uh, by J.R. Church, I believe, or something like that, um, where he talks about each prophecy being fulfilled. Uh, the Holocaust is in there, Hitler's in there, everything is in there. Um, all in the book of Psalms, the 19th book of the Bible, and the 48th book back, re representing 1948, the year that um, Israel got their statehood back. So, uh, man didn't write the Bible. God orchestrated it. Um, and 120 years is 2020 from 1900. Um, I remember God said signs of the end. Wars, rumors, wars, rumors of wars. That is a tongue twister. Kingdom will rise against kingdom, nation against nation. We saw World War I kick off in the 1900s. Let's think about it. The Cold War was the ultimate rumor of war. Um, pestilences. Um, we already see the coronavirus, H1N1, swine flu, bird flu, da 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 da. Still haven't seen a bird sneeze or a pig fart, but <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, yeah. We see the plague of locusts right now. Same plague used in Egypt is over in, uh, is it, I believe it's Africa somewhere. Um, or is it the Middle East? One of those two. But anyway, we all know it. We all heard about the plague of locusts, earthquakes, volcanoes. The list goes on and on. We're there. It's the end. Um, so look up. Our redemption draws nigh. It is very, very soon. Very, very soon, family. Um, love you all very much. I will see you soon. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Uh, the only way to be saved, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Precious blood. Once you believe on him and totally on him, you will be saved. You shall be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, lest you believe in vain. Hallelujah. Do not believe in vain.
believe he is the one true God, died for your sins, very, very precious. Serve him with everything that you have. Be blessed, my YouTube family. Car, you, you trying to go or not, bro? There you go. Um, car was being a little indecisive, made me a little nervous. Um, but I love you guys so, so very much. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.